welcome back to our to our talk about motivation and strategies and some very practical tips and examples on how to how to motivate your students in online courses. We have again, um, Dr. Michelle Ford, who is an online instructor at Sony Empire State College. And uh, in this video, we will be talking about how to sustain um, persistence in your students. So once we get the student motivated, they're all excited to start, start learning. And then as the semester progresses, they might fall off uh, fall off the excitement bandwagon, I guess, because life happens and they're busy and they're whatever. So how do you, uh, in your online courses, how do you sustain your learners, your students' efforts and, um, and persistence? What do you do to keep them going, keep them motivated, keep, the, keep them fired up to, to learn more? Yeah, so it's, I mean, it, this is a great question because the online modality so heavily relies on writing, right? So that's the major competency, that's the major skill with which students need to express themselves. And for most of us, writing is a little bit of a lift. You know, uh, certainly whatever happens in my head often doesn't make it successfully or cogently down on the screen. Um, and our students are crunched for time. And, you know, and generally speaking, you know, they might be returning adults and so, you know, with other obligations and so forth. As you said, life happens. So what I try to do is first orient students to the fact that um, I think that all writing is in draft form. Eventually you have to turn the draft in and that becomes your final paper. But in general, my feedback is intended to be developmental. Students can um, all, often perceive critique as criticism. So I've tried to, and, and I don't have the benefit of speaking to them. So I try to very carefully couch my feedback to them um, to craft a more developmental um, sort of paradigm for them. Um, and to that point, I use almost a, um, um, uh, a very, uh, it, it's a rote in some ways, but it's a three-part developmental feedback. So I lead with something positive about the paper um, or the assignment. And then I move to something, maybe an area in which they could improve in the future. And then I end with um, something about their present and then how they might even um, uh, sort of cast that as a strengths perspective in the future. So it's a three-part, um, if you will, positive, negative, for lack of a better word, but more, you know, more of a developmental point, and then something that they really can take with them um, beyond the course. And then in their next assignment, they try to remember to refer back to that point to see how they've been developing and growing. And it gives students a sense of their own development as a learner, a little bit of a narrative arc around the course, and they realize that we're not just asking them to, to do stuff, right? It actually has a point, it's in line with the learning objectives, um, and they're not just hoops through which we're asking them to jump. Mm -hmm. And I'm also, I also know from, uh, from our previous discussion that in your, um, in your announcements, many times you also restate your goals and restate the direction where you're going. Can you talk more a little bit um, about that? Yeah, I do. So, and I'll also, that's exactly right. And I'll also use those announcements to maybe make some global observations about um, a, a discussion or global observations about a writing assignment. So I noticed that you all did a really nice job in terms of, um, you know, finding a current film to which you could connect. I am noticing, though, that there are patterns with respect to citations or there are patterns with respect to how you're integrating um, scholarly resources into your papers. So that's another way of, of not uh, maybe uh, calling out a particular student, but making more global comments. And also it, it levels the commentary so students know if that's something with which they're struggling, so is everyone else. And then together maybe we can, you know, on the fly create a learning activity to address just that. So it's using the flexibility of the modality as well to address, you know, maybe some some needed, you know, some needed shifts. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You were talking about discussions and how you how you provide um, feedback uh, for for your students. Um, that triggered um, a recollection, or I guess, of my of one of the strategies that I do. I allow my students to submit um, submit discussion in the middle of the week, and. Um, if they do that early on, I, I go in to the discussion and I give them 
some formative feedback on what they're doing right, where the discussion is going, and if they're going the same way, if they need to change the direction, how, um, how to proceed in a more meaningful way. And then I don't grade, this is just formative, formative feedback, kind of my opinion, and then they, they have a chance to come back and edit, edit their post, and then submit that edited post for, for the grade. And um, not only do they get obviously better grades, but they learn a lot. And I do get feedback from my students at the end of the semester saying that that helped. And I know they're, they're happier because their grades are better, obviously, but I know they're happier because they, towards the end of the semester, their discussions are actually um, much, much better. They're, they look more academic. They, uh, they cite better. They, they address the, um, uh, they, they address the discussion points just like they were supposed to. So obviously they are learning from the feedback as well as getting better grades. So I guess everybody's happy there. <laughs> okay, good. Thank you very much um, for your time, Michelle, and Thank for you. your tips and pieces of advice. And uh, we will see you in the very near future. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.